Hey, and welcome to this tutorial on interfaces in UE4 and 5. This is actually the second part of a three-part series where I go through the basics of blueprint communication, the more advanced options like interfaces in this video, and then we go into the organization of blueprints and how that can affect your performance in editor and in game. And with that said, let's get into the tutorial. So what's to do with interfaces? Um, basically, the normal way of doing things is via casting. So in our previous tutorial, we created a button mechanic where you go up to the button, you click the button and it opens the door. And if we go into the button blueprint, we'll find casting nodes all over the place. And the issue with these are, is that it creates a sort of reference between objects. And if you right click on one of your assets and go down to the reference viewer, you'll see all the connected assets. And basically anything connected will be loaded up alongside this asset. So basically instead of it just loading up this object, even if it's on its own, it will load up everything that it's connected to. So you might only have this in the scene, but it will actually load up all these assets as well, unfortunately. Um, and the way around this is with interfaces. And the best way I can describe an interface is like a giant folder that everyone in your team or company or whatever uses uh, to kind of go in and out for uh, information. Um, so if we close this guy down, we just uh, chuck that guy over there for a second and we right click. The way we make an interface is you go to blueprints and then down to blueprint interface, you click that and we'll call this bp underscore comms underscore int. And if we open this guy up, chuck this guy over here like that, uh, you'll just find a sort of gray background and there's a, a new function in here. And what this is, is there's just going to be a huge list of custom events, basically, and functions and you're able to call these from any blueprints that it's uh, implemented with. So if we, we'll just make a new, we'll just make a new one here um, and we'll call this int underscore open door like that. And if we compile and save and we open up our door blueprint like here and just chuck this guy over here like that you'll see we have a custom event here to open the door. So we need to start replacing a few of these. So if we go up to class settings and over to interfaces and we add, we go in here and we type in bp underscore comms int like that. You co compile. You'll see you've got a sort of pop up here called interfaces. And basically what well, whatever is on this list here will show up in here as new events and the cool thing is if we right click on that and we click on implement and now you have your own sort of uh, custom event and we connect this guy up just replace this for now like that file save what this does is is it creates a event that can actually be called from any other blueprint in the game without even casting. Um, and I'll show you how that works now. So if we go back to our button blueprint, like this here, and if we go up to the nodes that are casting to our door blueprint, like this guy here, and if we drag out here and we type in does implement interface like that, and we create a branch or click B and left click like that, and we connect that guy up. We'll just uh, chuck these guys over here at the moment and uh, disconnect. Or we'll, we'll duplicate this. Just replace that like that. Just put them over there for now. Like that. We may connect that guy up. And make sure that's set to BP underscore comms int. And if we duplicate this along here and type in int door open like this and make sure it has the little uh, letter icon here you put this into true what this means is is without casting we're actually going to call this event within the door here so there's no casting involved at all cool now the only thing we need to do is allow the player to actually trigger this event 
And in the last video, we actually created a dispatcher system where we could bind the action event to the sort of button press uh, custom event in here. But that's still casting and it's still connecting this to this blueprint and we don't want that. So if we open up our third person character here, like this, and we find our input here, and just in case you haven't seen the last uh, video, this is just an input action that we've created uh, that when we press the E key, it'll fire this off. But we need to go up to class settings and implement our BP comms int. And we'll just get rid of that one. That's uh, one of my past experiments. We save this and we go into interfaces and we actually need a new event here to happen. So if we search for this it should open this up and we're just going to use the new function we're just going to uh, replace this and we're going to call this can open door and we're going to go down to inputs and we'll call this target and we'll make this an actor like this compile save if we go back to our character and we go to can open door and we implement it like this and we're going to save this so if we right click and promote to variable and we'll just call this target button like that and if we drag out target button here and we drag out and we type in int open door like that cool and what's happening here is we're going to call this event and we're going to set this variable to the specific button that we are within and when we press e and we're going to call the interface event under this name but we need to go back to the button and replace this one with the interface event but we don't actually have the interface in here at all. So if we go to the class sentence and we add that in here, so we go BP comms like that. And just like the door, we're going to put in int open door implement event like here. And we'll just replace that for now like that. Compile save. But there's one issue and that is we still need to connect the character to the button. And in the past, we were using dispatchers and a cast to assign that dispatcher to the button press. And we're not going to use that anymore. So if we disconnect this like here, like that, cool. Shove them over there for a bit. And using the same practices of what we've used in the other blueprints, if we drag out from other actor and we type in does implement interface like that, and we check BP comms, right? And we just uh, chuck that guy in there, chuck that guy in there, right? So does it have this interface? So does the character have this? And then we drag out here again. And if it does, we're going to say can open door. Oh, and that's the wrong one. That's This is the wrong one. We drag out again and we say can open door. And you want can open door message. You want this little icon here. Like that. What we need to connect here is a reference to this button, like the one we're in right now. So if we right click and you type in self, like that, and chuck that guy in there, and save. Now if we just come down here and copy and paste this in front of the end overlap, uh, and connect the other actor into this, node and then into this node connect this guy up to the execute and if we just delete this guy what this will do is when the character leaves this sphere overlap it'll then set the can door uh, target to a null so it can actually disconnect the, the player character from actually pressing this button in future when they're far away and what's happening here is when the character overlaps this sphere this one here the game is going to check does this character have the communication and uh, the communication interface 
And if yes, it's going to trigger this event within that character and it's going to set this variable to this button. So that's this event here. So it's just going to trigger this one and it's going to set this variable to the button. And then when we press E, it's going to use that variable that we've just set and trigger the event in the button here. It's going to trigger this one. And it's going to do all this stuff, like all the visuals. And then it's going to go down here and check if the saved target within the blueprint has a specified interface, which is here. And it's going to fire over to this door blueprint, trigger this event and open the door. So if we play the game now and go over, so there's no casting at all here. This is just interfaces and press E. Cool. Oh, and I wanted to let you guys know that I'm working on a game called Button Pop. It's a mashup between tower defense and idle and a button masher game where you are the main button and you have to defend yourself against all the other little jealous buttons coming to get you. If you're interested in the game or have any feedback or any ideas of cool buttons or hats that I could add to the game, leave a comment down below and check out all my devlogs that I've got on my channel. I really appreciate your guys' feedback and yeah, with that said, let's get back to the tutorial. So there's actually a lot of pros and cons to this sort of process as well. Um, the pros are it's way better me memory footprint. Um, you basically don't have any references at all, which is nice. So when you load up the level, it should have nothing but the objects that are within the scene. The other nice thing about it is the fact that it's easy to share these events as well. So within your blueprints, as you can see, it's just getting that reference. But even if you don't have that reference, you can get all interface, get all actors with interface. So if you need to, let's say, hypothetically, if you had a button somewhere and you needed to open all the doors, you could have a interface event in the doors and just get all of them that have that interface and trigger them all through a loop like, whoop, like this. And then you could say um, BP comms. Whoop like this and then drag out and let's say open open door like that and that would be all blueprints within your scene uh, you could look through them all and open them all if you want um, which is really 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 easy and there's no casting at all um, the other cool thing about the interface system is that in here's a good example you can use it as a check See, instead of casting and having to check that way, you can actually use it as a as a way of saying, oh, is this an object that you actually want to consider? You can also have multiple interfaces connected to the same blueprint. So I know we've got one here, but you could have one interface for all your actions and then another one for anything that's like monetization or like maybe like counting uh, the values of things like health or like coins the player has or something like that. But some of the negatives is that I've found them to be very glitchy, which can be an issue. Uh, at the moment, they seem seem okay, but I've had more crashes to do with interfaces than any other part of Unreal, unfortunately. So buyer beware, I suppose. But the other issue with them is that if, if they do break, you basically have to remake them. And if you've got them across a lot of blueprints, that can get quite costly in time. Can also be really confusing like i've i it took me ages to actually figure them out um i've tried to make it as simple as possible within this example just so it's easy to you know get but they can be really really confusing at first at least so hopefully you guys can understand them a bit better but if you can get them to work it is worth it and yeah um the next video will be on organization of blueprints so that will be the little things just to make it look a little bit better but also why it can help performance with your game and your editor I've got a few devlogs up now for uh, Button Pops, so if you're interested in that game as well, go check out my channel. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!